Hi guys, how are you today? I'm so thrilled to be here. We got an elf video, some new elf stuff coming at you. I feel like it's been ages since I've done something like this, but I also feel like elf hasn't necessarily been cranking out the new things like they used to. So this is gonna be a lot of fun. I've got my Mary sweatshirt on. Spilled just a bit of coffee on it already today, but that's okay, we're still Mary. So I'm gonna make it all elf, regardless of whether like I have a new product for a certain step, you know? One thing that came in my order for free was this putty primer trio and it's the poreless putty the matte putty and the luminous putty since i already have these i'm going to just keep this intact and probably give that away or donate it or something actually i think i decluttered my matte and luminous and i just kept the regular so i'm going to use the regular poreless putty today this gets featured in a lot of like best sellers videos that i do like certain drugstore retailers you know if i'm featuring the best sellers this seems to always come up um, I find it to be very thick and I do think it's effective at the whole like pore filling element But I feel like it's a little more work to spread, you know Like you really kind of have to warm it up and get it going whereas the one from hard candy just Glides on my lips are a little bit stained still from last night. We went to Belle's first grade Christmas sing and it was so much fun and I put on this gorgeous red lip and then like long wearing it was own your empire the matting crown from Maybelline and then I'm like oh yeah we're gonna have to be there in a mask so nobody will know but I will know that I've got that red lip and now I've got the stain evidence next one of the big things like this is a big deal I think this is really interesting I got this angled silicone face sponge and yes it's dirty because I've been experimenting with it a few times here. It's latex free, um, but it says no matter the formula, liquid cream powder, this latex free sponge does it all. Angled sides, blah, 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 blah. It has a base dipped in silicone here. Okay, so this is a different texture right here at the end. Um, and it's not like it's that way all the way through, but as they said, it's been like dipped. So this feels different. It has like that silicone feel as opposed to just the sponginess that feels more like a real technique sponge all over. And they it says to use the silicone base to apply foundation using a bouncing motion to blend into skin. Use the sponge side to apply and blend. Can be used wet or dry. And why this is so interesting um, and so good, I've really enjoyed it, is that when you're bouncing in on that silicone side, there is absolutely no absorption into the sponge. So the sponge, when you use that end, it can't take anything it can't suck anything back into it. It can't undo your coverage at all. Like, so I'm going to use my e.l.f. Camo CC Cream today, which I wear in light 210N, and I'm going to give myself a pump. Doesn't quite take a full pump of this. This coverage really goes a long way. I love this product. I've reviewed it already. Um, so that's not a new to me thing, but I'm going to dab it all around, and then you're going to see. I really like this sponge as a blending tool. So it has definitely increased in size quite a bit when I dampened it. I wish it was like nice and <laughs> clean for you guys to see, but whatever. Um, so I'm using that silicone end. And the feeling on the skin, honestly, it, it feels almost like a regular sponge because it still has sponge texture in it. It's just been coated. Okay, so you can take it around and you can, it's, terrific for the distribution of the product. You see what I'm doing here? I'm just kind of distributing it all around, all those dots that I applied. And I'm getting real even distribution, but the sponge is taking nothing. And then I'm like, okay, it's time to blend. I need to blend a little bit around the eye. I flip to the other side and it's so squishy so it can get around everywhere. And you feel like, okay, I might be picking up a little excess here. I'm getting a nice blend. Like it's it's brilliant, really. I love it. I love that silicone end for like kind of getting it around, getting it everywhere. Then it's like you give the entire face a fair shot at coverage, you know, not just the places where those dots were were put on. But when you use that end to distribute, it's like none of the products being taken away or absorbed in the slightest. And then your other side just gets it all nice and natural looking and does what many of us are looking for a sponge to do with our makeup. I just... I, I love that. I love that. That maybe could have been a whole video, like just focusing in on that sponge. But we're going to keep using it now. We're going to do it with some concealer. I've got my e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer here that I wear in Light Peach. And we're just going to take a dot, 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 dot out here, a little out here, go down the nose with it, get around that uh, 
nose crease area and down here. And then again, if you wanted to kind of carry that around a little bit more and not take away any product, you can use that silicone side or just straight up blend with the other side. I kind of want a mini of this, you know? <laughs> Look, this is silicone side, distribute and blend. Check it out. Like, I mean, do these products not just look gorgeous? Uh, just the finish of the skin. Things are looking natural, but I've got all that coverage. Oh, I love it. I love, love, love it. For some powder, I don't know. Are they still selling the Perfect Finish HD powder? I would gotten this because I can't even remember who was raving about it. And it is a nice, like, little setting powder for under eye or T-zone or whatever. It's pretty basic, but you know, it gets the job done and it does not dull down the skin at all, which I like. In other words, it doesn't darken up those places you were trying to brighten. Really overall feeling nice and matte right now. Next, we have another new application item. They have a putty bronzer brush right here, which is angled and it's ever so slightly domed, okay? So instead of just being completely cut blunt, it's got just the teensiest taper that makes it seem like it's just coming up a little bit right over the top. But it does have that angle and we're gonna just use it with um, my putty bronzer here, I'm going to use my lighter of the two shades that I have just because I feel like my skin tone's going to be fine with that. And I'm going straight into this with my brush. And, you know, it's a smaller brush, really. Like, it, it kind of pinpoints your product more. If you were wanting a real chiseled contour, this would give it to you. And honestly, I could see this being a nice concealer brush. That was the first thing I thought when I opened it up was, oh, wow looks kind of like a concealer brush I'd enjoy. But yeah, that honey drip shade, that is pretty light, but you see it a little bit more if I start to use it in the cheekbone area. And this brush does like enhance the building up of it, the precise placement of it. Like it builds it up a little faster because it's not as dispersed as it might be with a larger brush I would use. And blending is really easy with these. I just think that's really pretty. Is this a total must if you've already kind of got a brush you like for your putty product? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's essential, but I will say that the size is really beneficial to me on this cheek contour part. And it is nice to have that brush that you might reserve, you know, that you set aside for your cream step like this. So for me, Honey Drip just ends up looking like a really natural contoured step so that's what I got going on there I like it I like the brush the brush is really soft um, again here's what it would look like if I did concealer with that couldn't you see that being a concealer brush and then I might layer on a little more bronzer because I want to show you this multi-use face brush so this is from their like white brush line their cheaper brush line I guess but the shape is so good um, it's like if we compare it to the complexion brush which my complexion brush is looking a little rough right now, but it's a little bit smaller. It's a little more a smaller shape, like really tapered up the sides, but still that nice taper from here to the top. It's a really good size for my face for a bronzer type step. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go into my contour palette. I'm going to kind of mix my bottom two shades and then just sort of layer on top. I wouldn't have to do this, but you know, I'm just trying to show you my brush. Look at my brush. It's just a nice fit. I could see me using this a lot for quick bronzer and contour or just all over face powder. It has like not quite as soft of a feel as like the black brushes that they do, but still completely workable. Next for blush, um, nothing new here. I'm going to use my Bite Size Duo in Watermelon. I feel like I've been using my pomegranate so much. Um, watermelon's really feeling left out. So this is a gorgeous duo. The highlight here, you're just going to love the highlight, but the blush is just kind of a works for anything, works for any look type of blush, you know? See that? How we're getting that little, mm, yes. Oh. I haven't used this in a while. See, isn't that blush pretty? It's just a matte blush, very basic. How would I even describe it? Like a little bit, kind of a dusty rose, I would say. Then we take our Real Techniques setting brush. By the way, if you're new here, this has an end, but um, like this is my setting brush that I got when, probably back when Real Techniques was a new brand, you know? And they had that end and it was like 
a black silicone -y type of end but it got real tacky and I just got frustrated when I was cleaning it one day and I couldn't get the stickiness off so I just straight up pulled it out and now this is what we work with. But go into that highlight and the brightened glow from the highlight in the watermelon duo. I mean, are, are you are you seeing what I'm seeing? What is this thing like three bucks all together? Like why would you not buy this? And while you're at it, get pomegranate and get spiced apple too. You have the full blush and highlight wardrobe. And it just doesn't seem like it would do that to you, you know? It looks almost peachy in the compact. I do still have some hydrating coconut mist from e.l.f., so I'm going to use that to set. This is the improved take on Too Faced Hangover Mist, in my opinion. And then, my friends, we got the new Brow Lift, this, like, gel and the tool. I got that to use. Um, first, I'm going to fill in my brows. I'm going to use, let's see, for e.l.f., use e.l.f. Instant Lift here in the neutral brown shade, which is just a real standard cheap pencil. Is it still two dollars? But it goes in the brows pretty quick. It's a nice texture, not too firm, not too soft. It's not as skinny as a brow whiz, but it's retractable and I like that. And it's just been a long time thing that I've kind of raved on here, so I'm getting that all up in the brow. And we'll go ahead and fill in this one too. You guys, I love the first grade age so much. Like, we're entering the building, and there's a little girl, like, walking in a short distance ahead of us with her dad, and Belle, like, shouts out her name, Piper, Piper, and she's like, oh, hi, and then just without saying anything, they just begin holding hands and walking to the cafeteria where they're supposed to meet, and I just thought, like, oh, so pure, so precious. Like, no questions asked, we're just going to be holding hands now. We found each other and we're just going to hold hands. I don't know, I just thought that was so darn sweet. And it was like not a word was said about like, do you want to hold my hand or any awkwardness about possibly holding it. It was just like, you know, just boom. And I was just get glad Biddy didn't freak out because she was there too. And um, something that's been happening with her, I feel like when we go over to the playground, if Belle starts like running around with some other kids that she knows there, Biddy gets a little jealous and a little like territorial about her sister and she wants her sister to come play with her and be with her. So I was glad she didn't say that and start like, no, nobody's holding hands with my sister and cause a big <laughs> but she's not that extreme about it, but she'll like get her feelings hurt if she feels like she's not getting enough attention from her sister. Okay, brow lift. So this is a gel, and what it says to do is actually dip this right in here, the spoolie, and kind of get it evenly coated, and then you're going to just brush your brow hairs up like so. Can you see it lifting? And you can feel that hold really happening here and then you can press it down <laughs> with this which just seems odd to me but I guess that's what the kids are doing these days. You, you're supposed to press the brows in place until set and um, you do bend this a little bit because it needs to be bent and mine came just a little bit bent um, in order to get into that gel but kind of cool right like lifted brow. The hold actually feels really good with this I do feel like my brows keep the shape all day. I think it might vary depending on like how much product you put in. And I don't do as much lifting. As, as I get out here, I'm gradually lifting less and less because I just feel like that look funny. Pat it down. And once you press it down, like you really feel like it's locked in there. Perky, fluffy brows. Okay, there was an era of my life where that I was never trying to make them more fluffy. I'll tell you that. Now here I am. I'm using my Milani eyeshadow primer. We're breaking breaking the elf rule for just a second. And they have, from what I can tell, two new bite-sized quads. One of them makes a lot of sense to me and one of them doesn't. And I will be using whatever one I choose to use today. I'll be using it for the first time. Okay, this one called Orange Dreamsicle. Like, I don't know, just kind of kind of surprising to me. Like, it doesn't have a lot of contrast or, or impact, really. I feel like I need to take the sticker off so you can tell. And I'm so into Orange Dream Sickle, like I really, it's making me want one now. I haven't had one in a while, but that's all it is. You know? Like what? Okay, I'll, I'll try it sometime, but 
I don't know. And then we have one called I Love You a Latte, and it's a pure matte. And oh, there's a little thing you can pull on the back to make this whole situation easier. It's satisfying too. And you can just pull it off. Here's this one. Some of you are saying boring as the day is long, but um, you know, maybe a nice little essential to have on hand. We're gonna we're gonna do this look today. This one I just thought like I don't know. <laughs> Of all things, like of all new like looks to put out, it's Christmas time and well, orange dream sickle. Okay. Was well, somebody with a lot of creative pull at Elf just sitting in their office one day and like, you know, we gotta get a dream sickle one. Everybody just had to go with it. That's how I imagine it went down. Moving on to this. I'm gonna go to this shade right here. So this is my first time using it. Let's see what the pigmentation is like. I've enjoyed these e.l.f. bite-sized quads. I mean, I think they're very good quality. There are certain ones where I'm like, oh, it's missing this or that that really would have completed the look for me or something. But I've never really complained about the quality. And I will say you can look to Catrice or Wet n Wild for some really nice five pan palettes that oftentimes do a really good job of completing the spread. Like sometimes when four isn't enough, you look to those and you're like, yep, this five pan did it. Okay, I've got that shade in there. Then we've got like, like sort of two tones of mid-tone. This one, is it gonna come off a little lighter? A little cooler, maybe? Yeah, I bet if you just used that, it, you'd really get that naturally shadowed effect in the crease. I'm just kind of layering them both now. But the first one I used, obviously, a little more warmth, a little more cool. Going into the end shade, a little matte cream, never hurt anybody. Now, this is a really important part here. We need the brown to deliver. We need this dark brown to be everything we hope it will be. It looks like it's going to be pigmented. Seems to be packing on evenly. Packing on, flipping my brush. Really nice. Who can picture this look coming together with a nice red or rich berry lip? I mean, it's classic. It's timeless. So then once you've done that, you can just pop back to the brush that you first used in your crease. And then I just kind of use that to mesh it all together. See how beautifully soft? That's what starting out your crease with something will do for you, is when it comes time to blend in something darker, then it's like it has a nice little sort of base of color to merge with. And that brown is nice and cool. So for my cool shadow lovers, this should not upset you. Now you know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into the cream with my cleaned off flat brush. And that's just gonna pat right on here. Guys, I'm 100% in favor of this. <laughs> I like this a lot. Uh, I like it a latte, as the name says. Why not release like three or four different all matte color families? I like that look. There's something very perfect looking about an all matte eye. Not everything needs a pop of shimmer every day. Um, by the way, I'm just using the darkest shade here with my little um, Profusion small pointed brush, getting just soft, lower definition. Now going into it again, and I wanna show you the building up. If we wanna shape this more, if we wanna make it a little more dramatic. Bingo. Mm. Oh, I meant to tell you guys, there is a YouTuber. Um, she's in college. She's a cheerleader at Alabama. Her name is Mary Sergi. She's been YouTubing for quite a while, I guess, uh, but I just recently found her. And if you're a former cheerleader just looking to relive your glory days, like, just, just watch her for a little bit. She's, she's actually, like, I, I just think she's a great person, too. Like, I mean, she just got her act together. You'll see with some of the things she does, like, the, what she eats, what she does, like, the way she lives her life. Like, she's very, she's got it together, and she's, like, a college freshman, and she's cheering, you know, one of the top, programs in the country, University of Alabama, all girl. And I just really enjoy her videos. And she does like game day vlogs and all that kind of stuff. She's just really cool. And I just kind of like to live vicariously through her college experience. So there's my eye look. I love it. I love it. The only e.l.f. eyeliner I'm finding is this retractable eyeliner that I think I got when um, they did that back to school kit. And it's not really, it's not super soft and easy to use. And I desperately want to see a, a nice clean wing with this look. So I'm just going to use NYX Epic Ink. Sorry gang, there's something about it. Nice clean matte eye paired with a nice clean black wing. 
make you look like a million bucks when this eye look would collectively cost like maybe 10. There's that. There we go with the wings. Um, I kind of want to blend under my wing with that dark brown since I have it, since there is a nice dark brown in this quad. For that, I will just use an angled brush. Just take that dark brown under the wing and pull it to the lower lash line. You can even kind of fake your wing, like extend it out just a little bit with that powder, but it just gives a really nice clean shape to it all. If you do this, you don't have to. I don't always but it really just gives that nice clean lift, okay? For mascara, I'm gonna use my Big Mood mascara from e.l.f., which has been okay for me. I haven't used it a ton lately, so. Might be a little dust on the bottle, but it's one of those things they get sweeter with time. Okay, and don't wake up the children with your amazing vocals. Okay, Big Mood has a big ol' fluffy hourglass looking brush. Oh, she did get sweeter with time. Yeah, building up kind of quick now. I'm not doing lashes today, so it's all on you, mascara. Make it happen. I've talked about this one before. This brush just intimidates me a little bit. It's so big. I feel like I'm going to make a mistake. And sometimes with the bigger ones, it's harder to get in there. Like I have to, to be really effective with my lashes, I have to get in there. I have to be able to create resistance, you know, like really push against the lashes. And how hard can you push when the brush is gigantic? I keep going back over to this side just to add a little more. And I got, I got some good thickness there. And then a little lash discovery down low. You know one other thing I'd like to see happen on this eye look? Um, taking a small, small brush, going into that initial shade that's a little bit warmer, and just really deliberately getting that on the, on the edge of things. Yeah, that builds, and it builds in its, in its darkness, you know. Pretty. For lips, they have a new lip liner thing. It's called the Love Triangle Lip Filler Liner. It's triangular, it's more of like a teardrop shade. They say that that point can be used to, you know, really give you definition on the outside of your lips, and then it's thick enough to easily fill in. And I got several shades. I have mauve, I'm gonna swatch them out for you. So this is mauve, and then, uh, and it does seem like such a classic mauve, soft pink, which seems like kind of a warm, nude pink, and then this is plum, which really has a lot of red in it. Okay, so we're not talking deep, dark, purpley berry, but more of like a like a reddish berry is what that looks like. And then I got a few of these glossy lip stains. Um, I have the shades Coral Cutie and Power Mauve right there, and then also I got Basic Beige, and this is how short they are, guys. Like, they're really, really squatty little tubes. With these, I realized the other day when I was playing around, if you want to see the real effect from one of these glossy lip stains, you can't really layer it on top of one of the lip liners. The lip liners are pretty much what you see is what you get, you know? They're a thicker lip liner pencil that still has some precision. I think I am going to enjoy those, but there's not quite so much mystery to those products, you know? So I want to try the um, Power Mauve shade. Coral Cutie turned out to be way more orangey looking than it seemed like it was going to be on the website. Let me swatch Basic Beige for you. See how these are kind of sheer? So if you were to layer them on top of a lip liner, I'm not saying that would be a bad look, but it's not going to allow me to really show you the true nature of these. So that's Basic Beige. I will swatch the coral in case you're interested. That one's super orange. Just full-on orange. Wear that with your dream sickle eye quad. And then the Power Mauve, or Power Mauve, if you like to say it that way, right here. Okay, looking real pinky. So what happens is these sit. These are sheer, they call these glossy stains. A gloss and stain in one infused with mango seed butter. It goes on glossy and stains lips. Once the gloss fades, the sheer stain leaves the lips with a pop of color. So let's just take a moment. If we blot over these, what kind of a stain remains? Well, it's true. You are getting something there. Um, probably the least visible with the basic beige one. And really pressing on them and smearing them, they're not going anywhere past that. They do adhere. So let's put it on. And you can almost tell they're a stain because like the applicator, you can see where the glossy product is and then you can really tell with the basic beige one. Hold on, get it together, Em. You see how the applicator almost looks like a little more reddish around the outside? I think that's like the staining ingredient. So here you go. 
Like I said the other day, I wore basic beige, but I layered it on top of a lip liner, so I couldn't really tell what was doing the work, you know? So I want to know how this goes. And I think, really, the swatches on my hand tell you everything. That barely sat on there any time at all, and it still got to a place where it, you know, it was locked in, that overall color. So here's what we're looking like fresh, and I should have a nice pinky look on my lips all day. And it feels real comfy. Um, it feels super light, not thick at all. Wouldn't say it feels greasy, but it, it's closer to the grease spectrum than the like super rich, thick moisturizing. It's like mm, tipping a little bit that way, but I don't expect that will last a long time on me either. I think that will fade rather fast and I'll just be overall left with that stain. So what do we think guys of what's new in this video? This sponge was spectacular. Like this was really innovative and cool and served a purpose and I loved how again silicone end distribute the product and then really get in there and blend with the typical sponge end. I love that. Like that's something really special and innovative here at the tail end of the year. I think that was cool. And I liked really both of these other brushes too. Um, I see this putty bronzer brush as also perhaps being a good concealer brush, but it did well for more of a contoured effect with that putty bronzer, okay? If you're really wanting to chisel out the cheekbones, like it's good for that. It's a very good cut. This one, I love the cut and shape. It's not quite as soft as the black brushes they make. This eye quad, while it could not be more like standard and basic, I know so many people love the e.l.f. like bite size formula and it's, it's a great one to have. And wouldn't it be nice to also pair with some of those other quads that you have that maybe feel like, oh, I need that one darker shade, or I'd love that cream color to be my highlight or to help me blend. Um, you know, this could be a good little companion to some of those other quads. So I, I definitely give that two thumbs up. What about the brow lift? I think it's kind of cool, actually. Um, you know, maybe a little gimmicky, a little trendy, I don't know, but it is holding the brows in place without making them feel crusty at all. You know, it's a little more fussy than just busting out a gel, I guess, but the brush does help with that kind of like press down effect and you really get the the brow hairs standing up. You could probably make it happen with NYX Control Freak as well, but I don't know. I thought that was cool. This lip product, has the color intensified just a little bit as we've sat here with that on my lips? I'm watching you. I'm watching you lip color, but I do believe that's going to deliver on that stain. Um, the lip liners, I think I'm going to get a lot of good out of those as well. I use lip liners a lot more these days. And of course it wasn't new, but the bite size blush and watermelon, like given that glow, kind of taken over a little bit like hey I'm not new but I'm awesome so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video I need to wash my hair I think I might just leave it up like this today get me through the day have a very merry day and I will see you again very soon I love you bye